Hi, this short film shows me, Andrew Dawson, and my friend and colleague Alan Mackay exploring the newly created kayak trail along the River Weaver in Cheshire. Both of us are Cheshire West and Chester councillors, Alan for the Weaver Ward, through which much of the trail passes, and I represent Frodsham and Helsby, which is at the northern end of the trail. The kayak trail goes from Winsford to Frodsham and is classified as being of moderate difficulty. On 30th of August 2010, Alan and I, with my daughter Rachel, paddle the six and a half miles from Acton Bridge to Frodsham. Getting into the Weaver at Acton Bridge is straightforward. Just look for the portage sign underneath the A49 road bridge on the same side as the Lee Arms pub. It is easy to get a car close to the launch point here. The river meanders through beautiful Cheshire countryside and for much of the way there are footpaths, bridleways or cycle trails too and most of them are traffic free. British Waterways Board insists that everyone who uses their waterways must be licensed, and that even includes using personal watercraft such as kayaks and canoes. I'm a member of Canoe England, and one of the benefits of membership is a licence to access British Waterways licensed waterways, and that includes the River Weaver. The stretch from Acton Bridge to Dutton Locks is straightforward, and as you'll see, had the most river traffic on our journey. Unfortunately, vehicle access to Dutton Locks is not straightforward, so if you are to kayak to Frodsham, getting in at Acton Bridge is your best bet. This picture shows the approach to the locks. The remains of the MV Chica lie on the right-hand bank. Now, the only problem with the kayak trail is having to lift your kayak out of the water above the locks and carry it downstream to relaunch it. Getting out above Dutton Locks is easy enough, providing there is space at the mooring and portage point. However, the towpath is some 10 feet or so higher than the riverbank, so be prepared to manhandle your kayak. Fortunately, I have a trolley for the single-seat Big Wasu kayak, and the two-man Tobago kayak has a built-in stern wheel, which makes it easy to drag them short distances. Having said that, the stern wheel jammed out of shot a little later. Now I'm really impressed with the kayak trail as a concept, but I'm unimpressed with the portage point downstream of Dutton Locks. I took this photograph the day before our trip, showing a narrowboat moored alongside the river, where you're meant to re-enter it. Just look at the size of the drop from the bank to the river. Neither Alan nor I wanted to earn £250 from You've Been Framed, so we wheeled the kayaks further downstream, over a delightful iron bridge to a point where the bank was lower and the river shallower. As you can see from this photograph, we had to travel some considerable distance to find this launching point. Dutton locks are in the background. After checking the ground, we launched my daughter first, and she helpfully showed us how shallow the river was, if in fact we fell in. We didn't, by the way, but we did have to braid nettles and thistles. OK, we won't get any marks for style. Well, at least I won't. But I have to say, all three of us successfully got into the kayaks without getting wet. This stretch of the Weaver from Dutton Locks to Frodsham is very much a hidden gem. Now, so far as I'm concerned, it's important when kayaking in a group that you stay together. we found that my daughter struggled to keep up with us. This is largely because my two-man kayak is designed for flat river water, whereas the one-man kayak is more for use in the sea. It's great for that, but it's not so good for speed on a river. For my part, if you're going to go onto any water in a boat, any boat at all, you must have a painter. In other words, a stretch of rope attached to the bow which you can use to tie the boat up if you need to. We used the painter from Rachel's one-man kayak as a tow rope, and it also meant that Rachel could do some filming as we paddled towards Frodsham. We slowed at this point as Alan spotted what he tells me was a fox on the riverbank stalking a line of sitting ducks. The ducks were oblivious to that, and most of them flew to the other side of the river when they saw us. As this film shows, Alan and I were not the most coordinated pair, 
but we made good time and maintained a steady pace. Perhaps a few style marks, though. It took us just under two hours to get from Dutton Locks to Fronsham. It's only right at the northern end of the trail that you start to see hints of industry and people, such as the telephone masts above Fronsham and the chimneys of Rock Savage Power Station. For the rest of the time, you are in beautiful Cheshire countryside. Here is the swing bridge taking the A56 over the river by Fronsham. It would be ideal here if British waterways could be persuaded to put in a pontoon. It would certainly make for easier access to get in and out of the river. As it is, the trail formally finishes at the Runcorn Rowing Club a little bit further up. However, the bankside there is considerably higher than the river. Even though it's a bit mucky, I prefer to get out under the M56 viaduct where the river bank is lower. It's also much easier to get your kayak out here. Anyway, it's great fun. If we could do it, so could you.